Hey guys, it's Kyle Gaffron with the Bitter Birds. Just got in from the Sixers game not too long ago. Yet another loss. I sound like a broken record, but it's another game we could have won. Another close game. We had a lot of mental mistakes, a lot of turnovers at big points of the game. It just We seem to just shoot ourselves in the foot all the time. Kind of sucks to see, especially coming in with a Denver team that isn't that good. Uh, I expected a lot of great guard play out of them tonight. We shut down Moutier. He really didn't do anything, but... Man, Jamal Murray, that kid looks like he's going to be special. That's why I really wanted them. I wanted the Sixers to trade up and get this kid. He, he's going to be a special player. And you can see it tonight. He played like 23 minutes, dropped 22 points on us. So he had a big game. Embiid uh, played okay. He had 16 points, 5 blocks. That was good. He, he looked a little sluggish out there tonight, though. In, in the post, he really wasn't getting position on the block. Uh, he, he just looked a little sloppy. I don't know if the, if it's the back-to-back -back games, him not playing it, if, if that has anything to do with it. He just he didn't look like he was in sync tonight, um, which kind of sucks because he's a big part of our team. Uh, our European brothers played really good tonight. Dario at 17, Ilyasova, and um, El Chacho had a great game. He had 17.7 assists, so he distributed the ball really well. Dario played really well, too. He played great against the Celtics, so let's see if he can continue to do this. We've seen a trend from Dario, though. He plays really good, and then he plays really poorly. He was, like, non-existent in the Orlando game, so hopefully this kid can keep this going. I can understand why, though. He's played a lot of basketball this year. He's played the Olympics. He played for the Turkish team, and now he's going to play an 82-game season. So just like to see some consistency out of him. Loved the rebounding. He, he was great. Uh, still a little bit of deficiencies on the defensive end, but that's okay. We had the beast in there tonight. He had the five blocks. There wasn't that much penetration. They were killing us with the outside shot with the perimeter defense. We, we really got to clean this up. It just seems like it's the same thing over and over again, each week in and out. It, it's just the same mental mistakes. And, and the costly turnovers just... Passing the ball way too much, guys. Just When you have an open shot, just take it. It just seems like there's no confidence in some of these players that they just want to pass the ball. Passing the ball is great, but there can be a point in the game where you can pass too much, and you get yourself in trouble with that with a lot of cross-the-court passes that they get off steals and it's sort of a fast break. And we saw that happen tonight. Um, but I like what I saw out of him. I, I like what... When Ben comes back, I think El Chacho is obviously going to be the starting point guard for our second unit. It's going to be awesome. No Jalil Okafor tonight. No Nerlens Noel again. Uh, I, I don't know if we're even going to see Nerlens at all. They put him down with the 87ers. I, I don't think he's going to be up here. He's been mouthing off, but as we know, he doesn't want to play for the Sixers. He doesn't want to play for this team. He, he thinks what's going on here is silly with the log jam. He wants to be the starting center. Obviously, that's not going to happen. You don't want to be a team player. You don't want to play for us. That's fine. I, I don't want you here anyway, then, if that's the way you're going to be. Jalil Okafor was out tonight. Some kind of itis. I don't know. Hepatitis, spondylitis. I don't know what was going on with him. So he didn't play. I really want to see him and JoJo play a little bit more because when they did play together the other night, uh, Jock kind of shined a little bit. It, it opened the uh, offensive game up a little bit more for him. He got a lot more rebounds, which I like to see out of him. But when he didn't play, when he played against uh, the Celtics, he, he got shredded. God, he got demolished on the defensive end. Um, he, he couldn't defend Al Horford if his life depended on him. He, he was late on the rotation. He, he was late to get out on the three-point line. As we know, Al Horford, is a, it's a mobile big. He can shoot. He can go down on the block. He can pass. And he's just too quick for Ja to defend him. So he just looked lost again out there. But I think these two could be a really good combo if they get more playing time together. But since JoJo doesn't play back-to-backs, it's going to be kind of hard for them to play that way. But we could have something special here. We're not going to know, unfortunately, if something like this happens. I don't know. Ja could be on his way out of town, too. I don't know what the Sixers brass really has in mind. Uh, and Irsan Irasova, I was one, I'll, I'll admit it, was not a big fan of that trade because I really like what Jeremy Grant brung, brought to the table uh, with, his, with his athleticism, his defense, and everything. Uh, he didn't really bring too much to the offensive game. I mean, he was exciting to watch. He had some, some highlight dunks, but uh, this kid's been, this kid, this guy's been surprising. Uh, he brings it night in, night out. He's a, he's a good rebounder. He's been pretty soft from behind the uh, arc. 
He, he's plays solid defense. He goes in there to take charges. I mean, he's just a gritty player. But – and I know we did get a first-round pick out of that trade, too, but it's not the 2020, so virtually it doesn't really mean anything to this point when we're in the building process. Uh, problem is, though, Irsan is a free agent after this year, so getting rid of Jeremy Grant in, in this sense, just for a one-year rental, a stopgap for Irsan, I don't think would be worth it. So hopefully we can get a deal done with him because I really like what I've seen out of him. He's been a solid player night in and night out. Um, but again, our, our guards just got shredded on the defensive end. Nobody could stay in front of <clears throat> Jamal Murray. He, 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 man, he really exploited the uh, guards' defense tonight. They just, we don't have the greatest guards, as we know. They, they don't play good defense, and I think that has a lot to do with Jaws' inability to play defense too. If if they're getting beaten off the ball all the time, it's left to him to kind of defend, which isn't his strength. So. Some of his defensive deficiency always isn't his fault, but you got to try to stick your body in front of this guy. I mean, he's a rookie, and, and he just he exploited him big time. I mean, he shredded us for 22 points tonight. Will Barton had a big game, and uh, Gallinari did too. I think they all had over 20 points tonight. Uh, but just the crucial turnovers. It's just we play so good the first half. I mean, there's high energy. We, we get a lead. And then it seems like when, when Embiid goes out, it's just the offense gets stagnant. Nobody knows what to do. They don't move. And, and then when that happens, they pass the ball way too much, and it just causes more turnovers. Just mental mistakes. We had a couple shot clock violations tonight, which is not good. It's just nobody wants to step up and take the shot. So they really need to work on that. I mean, we're a young team. When Ben gets back, I think this was going to help. He's going to help facilitate the offense a little bit better. It's just... That's not going to happen until January. Hopefully, fingers crossed. We, I mean, we don't even know. That's what they say. But, God, I really hope so. It, it's just brutal to watch, especially when we're in this. I know we didn't really have big expectations coming in. But then we saw how Embiid's been playing. It's been great. And it, it just gets you excited to watch the Sixers again. You know, it's just like the process is slowly but surely coming together. You can, sh you know, see what Sam had it had in and his idea and had in the plan, and it's it's coming together. It's just the injuries have hurt us, you know, and, and we're just going to have to see. Rashawn Hone played really good, great energy off the bench. He had a couple blocks tonight, um, eight or nine rebounds, 11 points. He showed a little bit of his offensive repertoire. You know, he can hit an open shot. He can pirouette a little bit. He's got a little bit of spin move, a little hook, and he, he's always good for a dunk. So I like that he's getting more minutes. Uh, Gerald Henderson, too. I think this, this guy's got to be out there. He's a sound basketball player. He could score the ball. He's a good slasher. He can hit the three sometimes. So I'd like Brett to get him in uh, more game-time situations if he can. But uh, yeah, it's just it's diminishing just to see another loss. But um, just fun being down at the games. Just I'm glad we're in these games because last year we weren't in very many games at all. But different team we've had a couple pieces from 2014 finally have their first minute you know first time on the court uh so i really like what i've seen out of dario love what i've seen out of him beat obviously he's gonna have his his down nights but still 16 points and five blocks for a down night for him gotta imagine when he comes back next year and he's playing 36 37 minutes how are they going to contain this guy this guy is a multiple mvp candidate in my opinion i mean this guy could dominate the league for years to come you know, all well and good, knock all wood, if that foot stays healthy. But he's he's a competitor. He's just he's a great player, and we still got Ben Simmons. So I can't wait for him to get back and just get in this offense. And we got a great backup point guard in El Chacho. He he's been doing great things. He's got great court vision. Uh, he falls in love with the three a lot of times, but it was falling tonight. So he's a good illustrator. He can pass the ball. He can rebound. Uh, Sauce was off tonight, but he's been really surprising this year. In the beginning, I, I was kind of down on him. He really wasn't playing well, but he's gotten a lot more confidence in himself. Uh, he's been hitting a lot of open shots. He, he's been taking the shots instead of passing it up. I know he didn't play great tonight, but you know he's been very solid. So is Hollis Thompson. So we can just get this all together. We see the glimpses. It's we're going to be a problem in the next couple years. Uh, they get this first-round pick. Maybe we get a Markel Fultz. Uh, I know a lot of people like Lonzo Ball. You know, you got De'Aaron Fox out there. 
So we get a top pick. We're going to get the Lakers pick. Uh, they've been playing a lot better this year. But here's the question I want to pose to you guys. Are you in favor of trading Nerlens Noel or Jaleel Okafor? <clears throat> I think we'd get more back for Ja just because of what he brings on the offensive end. Uh, to whereas Nerlens kind of just has his defensive prowess and he and he's a decent rebounder. I don't know how much you're going to get back for him. I've heard you know, whispers that he could go to Golden State or Portland or who was the new team I just heard. It was Portland, Golden State. And uh, I cannot think of the third team that he was possibly going for. Um, I don't know how much he's gonna, really going to bring back. You're talking maybe draft picks. I, I've heard Andre Iguodala. I've heard Sean Livingston. I, I really don't want these guys. Portland, I heard for an Allen Crabb. I think he'd be a great addition to the wing. So if that's the case, I, I would go for that since he doesn't want to play here and, and he thinks the process is ridiculous. And he's been mouthing off. So I don't think we're ever going to see Nerlens Noel step on the court. Or would you rather have Ja, who I've heard Boston, he could be going to Boston, but for who, I don't know, maybe a Terry Rozier, uh, Marcus Smart, maybe a draft pick. They have a slew of draft picks. I doubt they'd give us one of the Nets draft picks uh, in the upcoming years because it's going to be so high because of how awful they are. But, I mean, who knows? This is where Brian colangelo has got to sit down. They've got to get together with – <clears throat> Brett Brown and discuss what the best possibility is here. Do we get rid of both? Do we get rid of one? Or do you include them both in just one trade? Do you package Ja and Nerlens, send them off, and get a piece? Now, when we do this, I I'm okay with it as long as it's stepping forward and helping this team and not just a stopgap. I don't want stopgap players. I want players that are going to add to this team for years to come that are going to help this team win. I just don't want a player here for a year or two, and then that's it. So, I don't know. It's going to be interesting with the, what the brass is going to do, the brain trust is going to do. Um, so far, Brian Colangelo looks like the trade that he pulled off for, you know, Jeremy Grant's been working out so far, but we got to lock down Irsan for, you know, three or four years, depending how much money he's asking. But, um, yeah, so far, so good. Um, hopefully, we can get this next win. We can get Embiid and Jalil Oka for a little bit more time, but it's been interesting. So hopefully we get this win, guys. It's been fun watching these guys play. Embiid's been very exciting to watch. Don't forget, we still got Ben Simmons. I've said it <clears throat> video in and out, uh, every video here, and I'll be talking about him until he finally steps onto the court because these two guys right here are uh, the future of the Sixers, and it, and it looks pretty exciting. So I'm jazzed up either way get this win next time and let me know your thoughts about whether we should trade Nerlens or Ja or both or would you rather just keep them and see how this thing plays out so uh, let me know leave some comments all right see you guys